trading triangles like a champ. Now, chart patterns are a well-documented study or part of technical analysis. And they are based on the psychological phenomena that occur between buyers and sellers of financial instruments. Now, this kind of sounds like all these buyers and sellers across the world are talking to one another, making decisions and creating these patterns. No. But because buyers and sellers are independently functioning around the world, that sometimes there's market events that you can analyze or put together these price patterns, and all of a sudden, all of this action happening all around the world actually develops into a pattern that you can see on a chart. And when you've seen this pattern develop before, historically, and you see it each time it develops, it tells you something, and it's all happening completely independent and randomly. But it does something over and over and over again. We can then put this into our little private toolbox of knowledge and use it every time it happens because we know when we see this particular pattern that certain events will happen. Now, I'm not telling you to make a trade. I'm not telling you when you see this pattern, is the market's going to go up or market's going to go down. What I am telling you is chart patterns exist. And I'm sure you've heard about chart patterns for online trading and their relation to technical analysis. You probably know about double tops and triple tops and the heads and the shoulders and rectangles and all of these things. But in order to have a complete understanding of chart pattern trading, you should gain a good understanding of one of the most common on chart formations. And I'm referring to triangles. Now, I trade and I fully believe in triangles. Uh -oh. okay. Now, there are hundreds of patterns out there. We have head and shoulders, bear, flag, double tops, double bottoms, channel up, symmetrical triangle, triple top patterns, inverted cup and handle, bearish rectangle patterns. I could go on forever. Okay, I ignore 90% of what I just said. We can see all of these things occur in our standard trading on a chart. Okay. But in my experience, and in my opinion, we can take all of these things that look like triangles. Whether you want to put a fancy name in ascending wedge or descending wedge, you want to call it a bullish pennant, you want to call it a bearish pennant, you want to call it a symmetrical triangle expanding? They're all triangles. Triangle means you have two lines that intersect together. Sometimes a symmetrical triangle, the angles are on the same degree. An ascending triangle has a horizontal and a vertical. So does a descending triangle. But a wedge has two lines on independent degrees moving towards each other. I say throw out all of those definitions. I say they all fit into the study of triangles. Because when people try to overcomplicate interpretations and people try to tell you, or brokers or gurus or educators like myself, try to tell you that when you see a bearish pennant develop, that the market is a continuation of it's telling you that the downtrend is in a continuation pattern. It is trying to tell you what the characteristics are. They're trying to predict and tell you what you're supposed to do. But we're going to look at it towards the end of this webinar. And I've actually done a study on 600 triangles to see really if you follow along those characteristics and whether they're a reversal or continuation, you'll find there's only 50% right or wrong. I can't make my trading a 50% right or wrong. But I can throw all that out and start with a very simple 
interpretation of triangles. Because we know when a triangle pattern appears, whether it's symmetrical, whether it's ascending, whether it's descending, whether it's actually a wedge and not a triangle. When we see two lines forming together into an apex and price moving that apex, we know that at some given point, price has got to break out. Now, if you want to prejudice yourself and say, okay, we have an ascending triangle in an uptrend, so price is going to break out upward, you can do that. But then you get yourself stuck in this little closed tunnel vision when you're trying to predict what's going to happen. If you say, when we have a support and resistance line moving together and price accumulating into the apex, at some point we're going to have a breakout. It could be a breakdown or it could be a breakup. When we have this breakout, we can then make some conclusions, but we can't make these conclusions until we have the breakout. Because if you want to predict it's going to break upward and you do all your setups and everything else, break up and it breaks down, you miss 50% of your trade. Or you get too many false breakouts and you jumped in the market because it did what you were predicting. So, Let's get out of the thought of predicting what the market's going to do. And we get out of characteristics. So a triangle pattern is a specific figure formed on a price chart, typically identified when the tops and the bottoms of price are moving towards each other like the sides of a triangle. When the upper and the lower level of the triangle interact, Traders suspect an eventual breakout from that triangle. As such, many breakout traders use triangle formation to identify breakout entry points. Now notice, I didn't say symmetrical. I didn't say descending. I didn't say ascending. I didn't say wedges. I didn't say break up or break out. I didn't say continuation. I didn't say reversal. I said upper and lower levels of a triangle interact we expect an eventual breakout. And I said about the two sides moving towards each other like the sides of a triangle. That made it really rather simple, didn't it? Now, there are different kinds of triangles that can be seen on a price chart. Before you jump into triangle trading, you should understand the differences between the formations. We will now take a closer look at the various triangle chart patterns. Now, we've looked at it. What we're looking at this chart is a what? A symmetrical chart pattern. Why is it symmetrical? Because the upper and the lower lines are moving or converging together on the same degree, same angle. Now, when we have a triangle formation, whether it's a ascending, descending, whether it's a wedge, whether it's a bullish pattern or bearish pattern, there are certain rules we can follow. A triangle is a situation in a chart where the tops of the price section are lower and the bottoms are higher. Also, the two sides of a triangle are inclined in the same angle. This creates the symmetrical character of the triangle. Now, typically, with a symmetrical triangle pattern or an ascending or a descending or a wedge, the expected directional breakout is what? Unknown. The reason for this is that the bullish and the bearish move have equal strength as seen through price action. When a breakout eventually occurs, it is likely to provoke a price move equal to the size of the pattern. That means we can project when we get the breakout based on the width of the triangle the target point 
if we were to go long or the target point if we were going to go short. So if the breakout is down, this would be our target. If the breakout is up, this would be our target. It is the width of the triangle. Now, this gets a little bit complex because you have to determine when the support or the resistance or the upper line and the lower line actually form the base of that triangle. Because there's a lot of times where you'll have this upper line in existence okay, from all the way back here. But this lower line didn't exist because price was doing this on the bottom. And when did you actually develop this line that's on that triangle pattern? And this is where you would measure from. So as you can see, from the example on the left, the potential target is based on the size of the triangle formation. With this type of measured move analysis, you will know what to expect from the triangle breakout, whether it breaks upward or downward. Same thing with an ascending or a descending triangle. We still measure the move from the width of the triangle. But if you notice here, this triangle base is here because even though this line, because this line came from here, we didn't have the triangle formation because we didn't have the bottom support line. Until we got that bottom support line, we didn't have a base of a triangle. But we would do the same thing whether we have an ascending, a descending, a wedge. So it's important to mention that the ascending and descending triangles sometimes break through the incline level, causing false signals and trapping some traders along the way. The same holds true for horizontal price range. You should always try to wait for the close of the candle to confirm the breakout. This will help reduce false signals. So in other words, we don't know which direction it's going to break, and we're not sure just because it went outside that triangle if we actually have a breakout. So the first thing before we can even define a breakout is we have to wait for the candle that closes outside of the triangle formation. Now we also have something called pennants, and pennants on a chart have a similar shape to a symmetrical triangle. They typically appear during trends and have what? A trend continuation character. Okay, let's take that whole sentence and throw it out. Pennants on charts have a similar shape to that of symmetrical triangles. They typically appear during trends. That's the end of that comment. Okay. Forget trend continuation here, because then you get silly. You start pre-predicting. Now with a pennant or a wedge or a triangle, we do the same with for the projection. So we have bearish pennants and we have bullish pennants. So overall, we have symmetrical, we have rising wedges, we have bearish pennants, symmetrical triangles, increasing, expanding, all of these things. Forget all those names. Just look for a formation that resembles on your chart a triangle. Now, once we've identified this triangle on our chart, we can't do anything until we get this breakout candle. See, here we had wicks that broke outside, but the candles remain inside. We have to wait for the candle that breaks outside and closes outside of the triangle. This candle is our breakout candle. It will give us our entry point, but it has not given us a confirmation and is not giving us a trading signal yet. There's too many times the next candle pops back inside the triangle. But when we get this breakout candle, we can start preparing. So we can measure the width to set our limit order. We can also set our stop loss. Our stop loss would be below, in this case, 
because we had a break upward, our stop loss would be a few pips below the swing low of the lowest swing before the breakout. So I'm going to show you a little prepared visual presentation on this. The You might have to turn up the volume because I didn't do a really good job on the volume on this thing, and I mean to redo it, but I haven't had a shot at it. But I just want to share it to you. The visual is what we want to look at. Unfortunately, I can't play it and talk to you at the same time, so otherwise I would just talk over it. But it's very, very short. But you just maybe have to... The symmetrical triangle pattern is formed by two intersecting trend lines of similar slope. These two lines are converging at a point called apex. The coiling of price that happens inside the triangle will eventually result in a breakout. The breakout can occur in any direction and the move is often as big as the base of the triangle. The ascending triangle pattern is easily recognized by a rising trend line intersecting with a flat resistance line. It is often regarded by traders as a bullish pattern because the price keeps bouncing of a resistance line that may eventually be broken. That descending triangle pattern is formed by a descending trend line intersecting with a flat support level. The repeated attempts of the sellers to push the price down can result in a breakdown to the support line. In all cases, the stop loss can be placed beyond the opposite trend line. The stop loss distance can be at least as big as the distance between the trend lines, measured at the moment of the breakout. A good place to place the take profit level is considered to be as far from the breakout point as the triangle base is wide. Choosing the take profit distance a little smaller than the base wedge, if the risk reward ratio allows it, can increase the chances of price reaching it. These chart patterns have no predictive properties, but they may give hints about the forces involved in the market. So as we said in the, the presentation, the, the patterns have no predictive nature as to what it's, the market's going to go. You have to wait for the breakout. Now the question is, can we trade or how can we trade triangles? Now, as you saw, the base of the triangle gives you your distance to set your limit. Your breakout, clo the close of the breakout candle gives you your potential entry point, and your stop loss should be placed a few pips below the swing low prior to the breakout. So now you have three pieces of information. You're not trading. You haven't made a trading decision yet. Good. You're thinking about making a trade. So, because the first thing we have to do is we have to weigh our risk reward ratios. In other words, we have to balance out what price we would enter the trade to what the distance is to the stop loss to what the potential take profit is based on our limit based on the width of the triangle. But we run into a, a couple other problematic scenarios because that sounds really easy to do. But, but one of the most important things we have to look at because risk management is the most important thing you have to look at okay, is number one, when you lay your target price on your order based on the width of the triangle, if that target price is higher than the next major support or resistance level, depending on which way you're going, you cannot use that target price. You have to bring that target price back down below that next area of support and resistance. Now, you're not changing your stop loss, but you're re reducing your target. So then you start your calculation. And we then have to determine whether we can afford to make that trade if we were to enter the trade at the breakout price. Because a lot of times you can find 
oh, there's a major stop loss or major resistance or major support line in our direction. And therefore, we can't reach our risk reward ratio and therefore we can't make the trade. So again, what we're looking for, regardless of the shape of the triangle is the breakout candle that closes outside of we're setting our target point or our limit, which is the width of the triangle. And we're setting our stop loss a few pips below the swing low of the lowest swing low before the most recent, before the breakout candle. So again, regardless of the direction, so here we go again. We have our breakout candle close outside. We have our stop loss below the lowest swing low. In this case, the swing low was even outside the triangle. And we would then set our entry point based on the width of the triangle. But we've got everything set up. So our risk reward ratio falls in our filter category and our approval category. We've got that set up. Our buy, we know where we're going to buy our entry point. We know where we're going to put our stop loss. Now, we could blindly, we could just say trade, 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 but then we're crazy. What we have to do is we have to wait for a confirmation candle. A confirmation candle. See this candle? That is your breakout. Okay. We had our breakout. We closed outside our breakout. This next candle is our confirmation candle. Because too often, this candle, the next candle, will move back into the triangle. And we would execute our trade on the open of the third candle at our determined entry point. So this would have been our enter point, which is the close of the breakout candle. We need our next candle to confirm that to stay outside the triangle and then Regardless of where this candle is, we're going to enter the trade here. But there's one little kicker that comes after that. We need to confirm this trade by looking at volume. If volume is contracting and not expanding after we get the breakout, then we don't make the trade because it's telling us that the buyers or the sellers don't believe in that particular breakout or that movement. So again, breakout, confirmation candle, enter trade, stop loss. So the question becomes, I've given you a set of rules, and these are general rules because you have to use your own judgment. But the question is now, I've been trading triangles for a lot of years. It's basically, I use support and resistance, I use support and resistance volume, trend lines, and chart patterns. That's all that I trade from. I don't really care about indicators because an indicator is simply an indicator. Indicators indicate. Or you can talk to call them the interpreters of price action. When you can understand what price action is saying, then you might use an interpreter to help you understand. In other words, you're at the UN and you're Canadian, you're the Canadian ambassador, and the French ambassador is making a speech in French. Well, you're pretty fluent in French, but you're fluent in Canadian French. So Sometimes maybe you might not get the fine little points of what he's saying. So you might use your interpreter 
to make sure you're getting the little gist. And so sometimes an indicator might help you get that little piece of information, but it's not something you make trading decisions on. Now, I kept talking about the characteristics of a triangle. Before we go on, let me just share with you one little short presentation to show you how you would do this again in real life. Now also, before I start this little presentation, if you notice on your screen, there's a little box that says handouts. I put together two handouts for you. One is called Chart Patterns, the final handout. This goes over everything we talked about as well as all the other chart patterns out there. I put this together for you so you don't have to memorize everything we're saying. I also gave you the technical analysis guide from investing.com. This is an exceptional resource guide. It covers all of technical analysis. This is a book. They are free. There's nothing you have to sign up for, nothing you have to do. They are in PDF format. Just click the download button, download them to whatever device you're using because they're only available in this live class. Then you can move them around later. There's no password, no code, no nothing. They're just documents for you for attending the class. Let's focus on how we can trade these patterns to increase our trading equity. There are a few techniques that can be employed to trade these triangles, irrespective of what type of triangle is and whether we are buying or selling. In this example, let's focus on a long setup. If a triangle is applied here, we can anticipate a potential breakout occurring to the upside due to the overall uptrend conditions the market is in right here. A long entry may be taken at this point here. A stop loss placed potentially below the triangle bottom or below a previous swing low, depending on the trader's risk tolerance, which is relevant to one's account size or emotional level. Now the great thing about trading with triangles is that they involve a level of symmetry with the market. Generally, one can calculate a potential exit point by this strategy working with the parameters of the triangle that already have been formed. For instance, measuring the distance between the highest point formed within the triangle and then the lowest point can provide a distance of measurement that can be employed for an exit strategy. To highlight this in practical terms, the distance measured here equals roughly 70 pips of movement. On many occasions, if the price breaks to the upside, there is a level of symmetry that comes into the equation. Potentially, we might have the market move 70 pips higher from the point where it broke out of the triangle. So using the length of the triangle to determine an exit point is a common approach when trading with triangles. Look at how the market hit that target of 70 pips at this point. Let's now look at a different technique one can use to trade with triangles. For a short setup, once the triangle has been applied and one expects at some point that the market will break out and make new lows, one can enter their sell order at this point right here. A stop loss can be placed either above the triangle or above a previous high around here, ensuring a small risk if the trade goes up instead of down. A trader can use the lines that form the triangle to guide them to an exit point. For instance, take this upper line, which is sloping down. Double-click on the line itself. Hold down the control button on the keyboard. And this will duplicate the angled line used to form the triangle. The key for creating a duplicated line is to connect it to the lowest point within the triangle at this low right here. This provides a guide for the trader to close or exit their position once price goes near the line, which will act as support, which indicates a time to react. 
here is a okay so again you've seen how we do this now ultimately the question comes down to how reliable is all of this information and the reason i say i don't use the characteristics that a, a symmetrical triangle moving in an uptrend has a bullish characteristic or a bear pennant appearing in a downtrend will tell you that we're getting a reversal. Because again, I tell you, it psychs out your mind. So what I did is I went back and I looked at over 600 legitimate triangle formations. In the four hour chart, I was able to find 165 of these triangles. Okay. And I measured the slope of the trend and I went based on the characteristic style of whether it's a correct bullish or correct bearish. Okay. And I did it on five major currencies. What I found is that sometimes it does follow the characteristic and sometimes it doesn't. But the difference was only 54% correct following the characteristics. But that's not enough for me to slant my trading or predict the market. Because 50-50 is where we started out at. So if I discontinue that and take it out of my thought path process, I'm just making my life easier because I'm putting something in there that doesn't help me much. I went back and then went and tried them when I saw them in a one-hour chart. And the shorter the period, the less reliable it is. In the one-hour chart, I found these same things to only be 51% accurate. The triangle was correct. The trade would have been correct, but the prejudicial way or the characteristic was only 51% right based on the formation of the triangle. So therefore, after testing 525 patterns and finding that the overall success continu uh, continuation or a reversal was only 52% right, it wasn't worth my efforts. Because what we're always doing is we're looking to move the odds in our favor. And when we put erroneous information in our heads, the odds aren't in our favor. While there are instances when symmetrical trials mark important trend reversals, they are more often market continuation of the current trend. Regardless of the nature of pattern continuation reversal, the direction of the next major move can only be determined after a valid breakout. So in order to increase our success, what we want to do is we want to look at the quality of the trend. When we see that the price is moving in a well-developed trend and this triangle formation is formed pretty, pretty is formed, the, the quality of the formation is well-developed the more likely we're going to be successful. So we want to see the quality of the trend that this triangle is developing over. We also want to keep our eye on volume, as I mentioned before. Volume will always help you. So as a triangle extends and the trading range contracts, volume should start to diminish. This refers to the quiet before the storm or the tightening consolidation before the breakout. Once we get that breakout, we should see volume increasing. If we don't, and we still see this diminished volume, the markets don't believe in us. Now, it's also important to understand our breakout and the timing for the break and the breakout direction. The future direction of the breakout can only be determined after the break has occurred. Sounds obvious enough, but attempting to guess the direction of breakout can be dangerous. Even though a continuation pattern is supposed to break out in the direction of long-term trend, this is not always the case. A breakout should be on the closing basis for it to be considered valid. So it has to be on the close of the candle, not just because it broke out. Even if it broke out and skyrocketed all the way up, you can't do anything until you get that first candle to break out. The breakout should occur with an expansion in volume, especially on upside breakouts. Now, after a breakout, the 
apex can turn into future support or resistance. The price sometimes returns to the apex or the support and resistance level around the breakout before resuming the direction of the breakout. And remember, price targets. You saw the two methods for setting price targets. But remember, you have to look at your price target with open eyes. Okay. If there's some deterrence in between the breakout point and the, the target price, you need to take that into consideration. So in sum, triangle patterns are easy to spot, provide good risk reward opportunities. Traders can quickly know that a big move may be near, as well as the profit objective and the amount to be put at risk. Now that you have the knowledge of these three powerful price patterns, you are steps closer to becoming a more confident trader. So thank you very much for joining us. If you want to learn more about triangles, go to www.alvexo.com, click on their education center, and they have lots of webinars, seminars, reading material, visual material, editorials, you name it, ebooks on patterns and triangles or whatever field you want to learn, whatever you want to learn about, you'll find it. So thank you very much for joining us today. Have a great trading week. And again, thank you for supporting Alvexo and investing.com.